unconditional sacrifice for the undeserved. Mark chapter 10, verse 32 and 45. The Easter Sunday is five weeks from today. I hope we all learn more about the cross through this season. Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection is the very foundation of our faith. The better you understand the cross, the stronger faith you would have. You might say, Pastor, I have heard the message of the cross so many times in my life. Is, is there anything new? Most times, we are blinded and fail to grasp the deep meaning, true meaning of the cross. So, what is the result when we fail to grasp? And what blind us? And what is a true meaning of the cross? We, we will have this message for today. Because we fail to grasp the deeper meaning of the, of the cross, so we need to hear the message of the cross again and again. Many people ignore the cross, for it is the hard message. It is the same. It was the same for the disciples. Jesus foretold his crucifixion two times already, but they turned deaf ears to Jesus, or they didn't want to hear it. Mark chapter 10, verse 32. They were on the way, I'm sorry, on the way going up to Jerusalem. Jesus was going ahead of them, and they were amazed. But those who followed were afraid. He took the twelve aside again and began to tell them what was going to happen to him. Jesus and the disciples were heading for Jerusalem together. Now, in Jerusalem, Jesus was going to die. They didn't know why. However, they didn't want to ask because they were afraid of any danger to themselves. That's why verse 32 says, Jesus was going ahead of them. The, the disciples were reluctant to follow Jesus and delaying and slowing down the pace. Then Jesus explains again what was going to happen to Jesus, not to the disciples. Look, we are going to up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and experts in the law. They will condemn him to death and will turn him over to the Gentiles. Look, it's interesting that Jesus used third person narrative here, right? The Son of Man and condemn him, and will turn him over to the Gentiles. Being handed over to the Gentiles is huge humiliation for, for Jewish people. And verse 34 says, what, what, is, what is going to happen to Jesus himself, actually to the person who is speaking right now? They will mock me and spit on me flog me severely, and kill me. Yet after three days, I will rise again. And look here how, how much Jesus detailed his suffering. And also he narrates as if it's someone else, not himself. He used third person expressions. Jesus told them he was the Messiah, the Savior. Now, how the Messiah would be rejected by his people and killed by the Gentiles? Wasn't Messiah supposed to deliver Israel from Gentiles' power? And then, the rise again, resurrection? Isn't this strange? And why? But they didn't ask any more question about it. They were afraid to hear that they needed to die as Jesus died. 
Isn't this the same reason that we hesitate to draw near to the cross? We are afraid to hear, you follow me. But remember this, this is, if we fear such challenging calling in, my life, in our life, it is a lack of faith and trust in the Lord. Whenever Jesus says, follow me, it will benefit it will benefit us eventually. Now, I can say, what is the result when you don't understand the message of the cross? Fear cripples you down. Fear makes your step slow down at the such a moment. When you lose your first love, when you lose your passion and fire for the ministry, for, for the gospel, for God's kingdom, you need to hear the message of the cross again. Now, what is the reason? What blinded their eyes, their mind to understand the cross is seeking glory blinded their eyes. Verse 35. Then James and John, the son of Zebedee, came to him and said, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. He said to them, what do you want me to do for you? Look at here. All other disciples were silent and dare not to mention about Jesus' death. But these brothers boldly came forward and brought their agenda. But it was not about the cross. They said to him, Permit one of us to sit at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. Look at what, what they're asking here. Jesus will be killed. Their teacher is going to die. But their interest was their glory. How selfish they were. Let's not be selfish, especially in this season when Jesus died for us. Now we can say, the seeking glory blinded their eyes and failed them to grasp the true glory of the true glory of the cross. That's why Jesus said to them, verse 38, but Jesus said to them, You don't know what you are asking. We we know. Jesus, uh, the prayer before his crucifixion, his arrest, John chapter 17, verse 1. Jesus prayed this way, Father, the time has come. Glorify your son so that your son may glorify you. Now here, what is the time here? It's time of crucifixion. So Jesus saw bearing the cross was a glorious work. Therefore, as they asked to participate Jesus' glory, it would imply to be crucified together with Jesus. Of course, they didn't mean this. That's why Jesus said, you don't know what you're asking. And Jesus added, are you able to drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I experience? And Jesus meant, do you want to join to my glory? It is taking the suffering with me. Did you mean it? Do you mean it? However, James and John didn't, under, didn't understand it still here. And they said, yes, we are able to drink the cup and be baptized. They thought, if suffering is required to receive glory, we will reluctantly endure it. Look at this. What is their motive of following Jesus? All ministering the church, not the love of Jesus, but their selfish glory. When you work for the Lord and minister the church, if it is for, for the reward, your devotion is not genuine. You might not get a reward in heaven. Then Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink, and you will be baptized with the baptism I experience. But to sit at my right 
or at my left is not mine to give. It is for those for whom it has been prepared by God. No matter how much you work for the Lord, your reward is totally up to God's decision. Then you will say, is God fair still? Of course, God is fair. Listen, God didn't promise any reward for your service or your commitment except, except eternal life in Jesus Christ. Therefore, if you demand God to reward you in return of your work, your labor, your effort, your motivation is not right. Check yourself if you are saying, I work this much, God should pay me back. God is God has free will. He is not obligated to anything, to anyone. He is not obligated to reward you, but he is expected to do so for his good. Now, returning to James and John, Jesus meant it this way. Even though you bear the cross with me, but the highest glory that you, you are you wanting, you expect, is not guaranteed. If you trust in the Lord, if you love me, then just follow me. Just you can sacrifice for my sake. I can say it this way. Unless you trust in the Lord, totally, 100% trust, you will force God to bless you or answer to your prayer. And that's exactly what you don't understand the cross. Now, what is the meaning of the cross then? That Jesus show and Jesus want his disciples to understand that? The cross is unconditional sacrifice for the undeserved. As they failed to understand the cross and they didn't pay attention to the message of the cross anymore, and Jesus explained to them why he should die. We can say there are three observations from this passage I can share. The first one, Jesus died for the undeserved. Verse 41, now when the other ten heard this, they became angry with James and John. Why, why are they angry? Not only James and John, 10 other disciples also wanted higher rank in God's kingdom. Only they dared not to address this issue in this critical situation. Now, imagine, if you were Jesus, would you die for such selfish friends or disciples or followers? I, I, I guess not. However, Jesus kept moving forward to die for these undeserving fellows. This, this sacrifice for the undeserved is very hard to understand because the world, people in the world esteem someone with great achievements and rebook those who are left behind. The world try to sacrifice their life even if the recipient are deserving. Let's say Ukraine war. At first, at the beginning, United States was not that supportive. But as the United States saw how courageously the all the people they, their Ukraine people sacrifice and try to keep the freedom in their country. And yes, all the world became more supportive. This is the world. Because in the world, they earn reputation and glory by their works. But in God's kingdom, it's totally different. Jesus said this way. Jesus called them and said to them, you know that those who are recognized as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in high positions use their authority over them. 
because they they have earned reputation and glory by their works. Thus, they use it for their benefits and for their satisfaction by exercising their power over others. But it is not so in God's kingdom. But it is not this way among you. Instead, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be the slave of everyone. Now, how is it possible? How does it make sense when a great, great, the great become needs to be a servant of all? What kind of society do we see this? Yes, it's family. We are the family in of God in Christ. In family, the father sacrifices and serves his children, not because he is not great, not because the children, his children deserve that, but because he loves them and because he is able to do so. Now, elder sibling cares for younger siblings, even though they don't deserve because it makes the father happy. This is what do in Christ. This is the church. This is the God's kingdom. And the third observation of the cross is this one. He gave away his life for us without asking for anything in return of his sacrifice. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Even the Son of Man. See his emphasis on even here. Even the Creator himself serves the greatest, greatest person, not human, I'm saying, the greatest being in the whole universe serves, sacrifice for us. That means the sacrifice or service don't define his or her greatness in God's kingdom. And Jesus said, give his life as a ransom for many. Ransom. Ransom is an animal that is to be, that is to be killed to save a person. Or it is the money someone pays to release you from slavery. Now, if the slave slave doesn't need to pay back the ransom money, right? If the slave needs to pay back the ransom money, it is not the ransom. It is a debt. So the ransom is paid in grace without demanding any payback. So it, it is the same as we understand the cross. If you don't believe Jesus' grace so free that you think you need to do something in return of His grace. If so, you don't know the grace. Jesus didn't say, you should pay me back my sacrifice. Just He said, remember my death. Remember His grace. So we, we, sh we need to remember His grace by refreshing the first love. Keep meditating, keep remembering his sacrifice on the cross, his death. That's what we do in Lord's communion. Let me close. Unconditional sacrifice for the undeserved. This is the message of the cross. How much do you understand this? Is it hard to understand? Is it hard to meditate it? Are you slowing down to follow Jesus? Are you losing first love? Then you should, you should hear the message of the cross again and again. Do not ignore or do not pretend you haven't heard of it. Don't turn deaf ears to the cross. And what is, what is obstacle? What blinds your eyes to see the cross? If you have desire for the glory, reputation, 
your uh, pride, all these things blind your eyes to make you fail to see true glory of the cross. And you will see vain human own glory. If you meditate the cross with the pure heart, not seeking your glory, but you're going to find the meaning of the cross, which is unconditional sacrifice for the undeserved. And you will realize we are called a family of God by Jesus' blood. We share Jesus' blood and Holy Spirit. In this way, we became a family. This blessed season of the year, I hope all of us grow more in knowing Jesus and his sacrifice. God bless you. Thank you.